Hi, my name is Vanessa van Dijk and in this video I'm going to show you the Ordinary Skin Care Routine for 40 plus. Now I have prepared for you as always everything in a PowerPoint so that I can share with you a visual guide that you have an idea of what the routine can look like, what treatments you can pick and so I want to share this with you now right here on the screen and really go through it step by step but you will be able to get a copy of it so if you check below this video in the description box they will find a link if you click on it you can see the entire PowerPoint online or even save it to your device if you want to fully recreate the routine. Now I want to briefly go over where you can find what information, what we are going to keep the focus on and then I'm going to go through this step by step. So as you can see we are in the PowerPoint. So for the morning skincare routine I want to keep my main focus towards antioxidants which you can see right here. Then for the evening I went ahead and I created two evening skincare routines. The first one would be working with exfoliating acids and the second one would be including a retinol or granactive retinoid. Now the way on how I have set it up is uh, that you can use them on alternate days to enjoy the benefits of both of them yet not overdoing it with it in general because otherwise you can increase the risk of experiencing irritation. But depending on your major skin concerns that you want to target or if you have a preference of a specific treatment that you want to use, it is completely fine to just go with one of the evening skincare routines and I'm going to explain to you the frequency guide as well. However, if you feel a bit overwhelmed based on what product you should pick because I went ahead and included more than just one, well then you will be able below the example routines to find a part in the PowerPoint where it mentions skincare product descriptions. This is where I have listed all the skincare products that I have uh, mentioned in my example routines with a little description next to it, which should help you to um, make your choice a bit easier so that you can see what would be a bit more suitable for your skin type, for your skin tolerance, and maybe in general on the ingredient that you wanna look into. And so you will find everything in that specific part of the PowerPoint. Now if you can see a specific skin type you know for whom it is suitable. If it mentions all skin types or nothing at all it can be used on all skin types. So I just want to be clear with that uh, part as well. But now I want to take the time to really go over the example routine step by step so that you then also can recreate it at home. So let's get started with the morning skincare routine. And as you can see right here on the top corner, we have the time of use as well as keeping the main focus on vitamin C. In the middle, you have like a little summary um, what this routine should help you to do. Below you have the example routine already in the correct order of application and below the boxes you have the overall general guide. So in the morning we are starting off with a freshly washed and clean face. This can be with washing your face with purely water. If that's something that you usually do, you like to undo this, go ahead and keep on going. Otherwise, pick your regular cleanser that's suitable for your skin type to properly wash your face. Then make sure after you have rinsed everything off to take a clean towel and remove the excess water from the skin surface by gently patting all over before you're going to apply your treatment to the skin. This is always an essential step. Doesn't matter if it's now for your morning routine or evening routine. I just want to be clear with that. Then when it comes to this part right here, you can see I've picked several uh, treatments. So I went ahead and I've included two hydrating serums because depending on the texture, maybe on your preference based on when reading through the uh, description, you want to go with either one of them. So either pick the Ordinary Marine Hyaluronics to add hydration to this nice mixture or the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid. And then you're going to mix it with the ordinary respiratory and folic acid as well as a bit of the ordinary vitamin C powder. This way you can create your own little potent mixture of an antioxidant so to say serum. And you're going to mix it freshly in the palm of your hand every morning so that you're making sure that you're getting most out of it. And so I try to visualize this even further so you have the little spoon right here with the powder. Then you're going to add your serums to this as well and then you're going to mix it until the powder is dissolved. And I've experimented with this mixture as well to give you an overall general guide of how much you would need to use of the individual treatments. 
So if, if you are thinking of the vitamin C powder, I've mentioned a small amount of vitamin C powder, so about one fourth of the spoon that comes with the powder. And I have the spoon right here to give you like an example. So this is the spoon. In general, please do not fill up the entire spoon with vitamin C powder because this can be extremely potent and likely increases the risk of experiencing stinging or burning on the skin. But in general, about that much, more or less. It can be a bit more, a bit less. You can really try and experiment with it, but in general, do not overdo it. And then you're going to place it in the palm of your hand. So about that much. And then you're going to add, based on the guide that I came up with, about two to three drops of resveratrol and ferulic acid, add it to the powder, and then you're going to add the hydrating zone to this. So either go with seven to 10 drops of marine hyaluronics or three to four drops of hyaluronic acid. They have a different texture, therefore I needed to adjust the guide, otherwise you may end up with either not too much, uh, not enough or even too much. And so again, once you have placed everything in the palm of your hand, mix it. Once you can see that the powder has fully dissolved, you then are going to apply it evenly all over your face and neck. If you're being completely new to such a potent um, mixture, you may feel a bit of stinging the very, like, the very like, first moment, so for a few seconds, but then it should calm down. If sensitivity still like maintains for quite some time, try to use less powder or more of your hydrating zone so that you can really find your balance um, how much vitamin C your skin is overall going to tolerate. Um, but please, again, do not overdo it. Then give it a moment, so about one to two minutes, before you're going to apply your sunscreen on top of it to protect the skin from the damaging UV rays. This is important not because of, uh, not only because of signs of aging and the damage that the sun itself can uh, do to your skin, but because you're already working with treatments that should help you with hydration, pigmentation, fine lines and wrinkles, and maybe rough skin, well, you want to make sure that those treatments are able to work properly. So while they are working on your skin concerns, you still need to protect the skin throughout the day. This is where the sunscreen is really important. And so I've picked the ordinary sunscreen, which has a very nice formulation. It's a light cream texture. But the downturn for some of you may be that it leaves a white cast. So I've mentioned this right here, so I just want to um, make you aware of it. But overall, the formulation is great. So if you do not mind the white cast, you can go with that one. Or Neot Survivor 30, which is also an excellent sunscreen. It's very thin in texture. It has a tint to it so that you're not going to look like a ghost. And it is suitable on all skin colors as well. So this is also a great, very lightweight sunscreen that gives you a more of an even complexion due to the tint that it has. And it makes the skin extremely smooth looking. So both sunscreens are great in their own ways. Therefore, I have picked them. And so once you have applied it to the skin, you're going to leave it on the skin. There's no need to wash it off. Now, if you wonder how you can properly apply your sunscreen before sun exposure, I do have a specific application video on my channel. So I'm going to leave it in the top right corner if you want to check it out to see how you can properly do this in the morning. But again, you will be able to find everything below the boxes as well. And this would conclude the entire morning skincare routine that you can do daily. Now I want to head into the evening skincare routines. So the first one again is going to keep the focus towards exfoliating acids. So in the top corner you can see the time of use as well as the days. Now those days only play an important role if you want to use this specific routine as well as the other evening skincare routine throughout the same week, like throughout the entire week. Then you would use your exfoliant on Monday, Wednesday and or Friday. So therefore you can see the days right here. In the middle, again, you have a little description of what the exfoliating acids can do for you. And below you have the example routine with a little description underneath. Now, what's important to emphasize in the evening is first of all, that you should work with non-exfoliating acid cleansers because you're already using an exfoliant. Please keep that in mind. And second of all, if you're trying to remove your sunscreen and or makeup from the skin, you can do this by using an oil or balm cleanser on its own. Specifically, if you're working with mineral sunscreen so that you can properly take it off. 
or you can go ahead and do a double cleanse if you should feel the need. But again, if you're working with your regular cleanser, make sure that you're picking the one for your skin type and that it's a non-exfoliating acid cleanser. And so if you want to know how you can do a proper double cleanse or how you can take off mineral sunscreen, I'm going to leave a video in the top right corner. So once you're done with washing your face, you have removed excess water from the skin surface, so basically pat the skin dry, you can immediately move on to the application of your exfoliant. And you can see I have several examples right here. Now, if that works well for you, you can immediately use the exfoliant after your cleansing step. However, depending on your skin, if you may feel a bit of stinging or burning, you have a bit of a sensitivity, but not too severe, you can always go ahead and wait five to 10 minutes in between if you have sensitive skin so that your skin can dry even further and then move on to the exfoliant so they can slower penetrate into the skin, which then leads to less stinging. And so once you have applied exfoliant all over, you're going to leave it on the skin, there's no need to wash it off. And you could stop right here, depending on how your skin feels, depending on your specific skin type. It's completely fine to just use the exfoliant on its own. However, if you want to add a moisturizer, my suggestion would be using a moisturizer with natural moisturizing factors that can help you to hydrate and repair your skin barrier. Now, you can use the moisturizer all over, However, let's say you have a more oilier T-zone, maybe your nose as well, and you do not like to apply a moisturizer in that specific area, but the rest of your face is normal to dry, and you may have also a bit of sensitivity right here, or maybe a bit of damage, and you're trying to repair this, then you can also just use the moisturizer on that specific part. So you can really adjust it. You do not have to use a moisturizer at all if you do not feel the need, or you do not need to use it all over your face, but only on the areas where you really feel the need, that it's necessary. And so you can customize this depending on your individual needs. And I went with the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factors or Nails Hydration Vaccines. Both are extremely great lightweight moisturizers that are suitable for all skin types. And so then you're going to apply it to the skin. There's no need to wash it off. So again, I want to remind you, you have the entire general guide below. Now, in case you say, well, I do not want to go with two evening skin routines. I just now want to keep my focus towards the exfoliant. Well, first of all, you could go ahead and follow those days above if you just want to use it three times per week. And then on the other days, you're just using your cleanser and moisturizer. However, if you're planning on using it more often and if your skin tolerates, you may want to increase it up to daily use. You can go ahead and do so, but you have to start off slowly. So you have the frequency guide right here on the bottom. So it personally, well, primarily depends on the exfoliant that you have picked as well as your overall skin tolerance. So start off by using it to do three times per week. So this could be Monday and Friday or Monday, Wednesday and Friday in the very beginning. Do this for some time to see how your skin is tolerating that specific frequency. And then if you still should feel the need, you can over time uh, increase the frequency to every other day or even a daily, if that's fine for your skin. So again, this is very individual. Therefore, take your time to figure out what works best for your skin. And if over time you feel like you cannot use it daily anymore, then reduce it. Always adjust it to how your skin is going to respond to it. And then this would be the frequency if you just want to go with one evening skincare routine. Now let's head into the other example evening skincare routine where we are working with retinol or granactive retinoid. So again, right here on the top, you have the time of use and you would then use it on days when not using the exfoliant. So Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and or Sunday. Here you have a brief explanation of what retinol, granactive retinoids can do for you. And here below you have the example routine as well as the overall general guide. So again, I have already explained the cleanser. It's going to be the same as I've just mentioned with the um, exfoliating acid routine. After you have washed your face, you can move on to um, hydration. So this can be the ordinary marine hyaluronics or the ordinary hyaluronic acid, either one of them and then apply it to the skin, leave it on the skin. And then after that, after it has absorbed into the skin, you can move on to either the ordinary granactive retinoid or retinol. So you can see they have different formulations as well as different strengths. So if you're being completely new to this, 
always go with the lowest strength. So either go with the 2% of conductive retinoid or the 0.2% of the retinol. And then over time, you cannot only increase the frequency if you should feel the need, but you could increase the strength as well. So therefore you can see all the examples right here. And then you're going to leave it on the skin. There's no need to uh, wash it off after you have done the application. And then again, as already mentioned earlier, it's completely fine to stop right here, primarily if you have chosen the ordinary granactive retinoid or retinol in squalane. They are already in an oil. They, on their own, are in general much gentler and can already hydrate the skin at the same time. So if you feel like, well, the retinol, granactive retinoid on its own feels great, it adds enough hydration to the skin, it does not dry out my skin, it's completely fine to use it on its own. This is what I personally would recommend doing and you're making sure that if it's going, going to help you to speed up the cell turnover, that that skin cells that are like slowly loosening on the skin surface, which again, if you're working with exfoliant, would then take it off, that it may not be an issue. But if you're working only with Gwenactive Retinol or Retinol and then using a moisturizer on top, it may or may not, which depends on your experience, from my experience it's not the best, clock, clock the pores. Because you're basically, when using a moisturizer afterwards, you're going to um, kind of like seal it and basically make sure that the, if your dead skin cells are quite loose already, but they aren't ready to let go of the skin completely, you're going to use the moisturizer on top and then they are getting stuck. And this may create issues. So if you're already a bit more prone to pimples here and there, or maybe in general acne prone skin, you may want to try it out without the moisturizer before thinking using that one on top. But in general, of course, it wouldn't be wrong if it works well for you to use the moisturizer afterwards. But I'm just going to talk about my own experience. I just find it best to use the retinol, when active retinoid on its own, like without the moisturizer on top of it. And so then this would be the example routine that you can follow on days when not using the exfoliant. But of course, if you just want to go with this specific routine without using the exfoliating acids, you have the frequency guide below on how you can get started. And so then this would summarize the second evening skincare routine and how you can alternate between them. I just want to quickly emphasize one more important point, and this is depending on the exfoliant that you have picked, when active retinoid or retinol, as well as your overall skin tolerance. If you do not yet feel comfortable to use the exfoliant three times per week right away, um, as well as your retinol, when active retinoid, um, like three to four times per week, it's completely fine to slow it down even further. So you may just want to use the exfoliant once or twice per week, and then your retinol, when active retinoid, maybe again once or twice per week, see how this goes. And on the days when not using either one of them, you you can just follow with hydration or moisturizer afterwards. So you can really adjust it and customize it. It just should give you an idea of what the entire week can look like when following with those treatments. And so this would basically sum it all up when it comes to the frequency as well. Below the example routines, you have a general information guide on retinol, Gwenactive retinoids and retinoids in general, how they specifically work. If you can use them during pregnancy, generally speaking, it's best to always talk to your doctor, but in most cases, they do not recommend it. And then if you need to use your sunscreen with your retinol or retinoids, uh, yes, but not in the evening. So you're just using your retinol, retinoid in the evening and your sunscreen in the morning if you have sun exposure. Again, below that, you will find the skincare product description, as I already mentioned earlier. Below that, you will find the general skincare tips, like how you can do a patch test, for example. And then underneath that, you have the sunscreen information guide, which does not only break down the sunscreen topic in general, but you also have an application and removal guide as well. So it includes everything in the PowerPoint. And if I'm noticing some little mistakes or something that may not be clear, I'm always constantly updating my PowerPoints. So you can always go ahead and check back um, to see if something has changed because I'm trying to keep that information as accurate as possible and also understandable as possible. And so this would sum up what you can find in the entire PowerPoint as well as how you can then use those routines to follow at home. 
Now, if you enjoyed this video, if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And I'm an independent YouTuber. I create my own videos. I'm buying my own products. I'm setting up my own routines in the PowerPoint. So if you want to support that work, you can go ahead and click on the super thanks button below this video or check out the description box that you will find a PayPal link and I would highly appreciate it. Now, this is what I wanted to share with you. If you now want to learn more about individual applications, I have those videos on my channel. I'm going to leave some of them at the end of this video so that you can keep on watching. And I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skincare. Bye.